A situation just happened. The House just passed the anti-Semitism bill of 2023. Now, I know that it says the anti-Semitism bill of 2023, but they just passed it yesterday, May 1st, 2024. Now, what is this bill? What does this bill consist of? Why did they pass this bill? Why do they think that the First Amendment in hate crime, quote unquote, does not cover this? Let's find out. Facts over facts over tracks, this and that, spitting slow, spitting fast, I could roast, I could gas, think I'm okay at last, but I don't know if that can erase all the past. So this is called the H.R. 6090, and this is the 118th Congress first session. Now, a lot of people are saying, well, we needed this bill, we needed this bill. Well, we have a lot of other things on the books already. We need to enforce the laws that we have. So if we don't enforce the laws that we have, then what makes you think that we're not going to enforce those laws and we're going to enforce these laws? It doesn't make any sense. So let's dig in. In the um, blah, 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 bill to provide the consideration of a definition of anti-Semitism set forth by the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance for the Enforcement of Federal Anti-Semitism or Anti-Discrimination Laws considering education programs or activities and for other purposes. Now, number one, be it enacted by the state, the Senate, and the House of Representatives of the United States of America and Congress assembled, section one, short title. This act might be cited as the Anti-Semitism Awareness Act of 2023. Now, this is only six pages of the bill. I really, 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 really urge you to read the whole bill. We're gonna read what it does we're going to read the gist of it in this episode here. If you do want to see the whole entire bill, if you want to read everything that I'm reading to you guys, the link is down below. On all of my social media platforms, if I repost this video, all of the links are in the description, in the comment section, in everything. It's down below. Read the bill. So, it is the sense of Congress that, number one, Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, 42 U.S.C. 200, 2000 D E S squared um, prohibits discrimination on the basis of race, color, and national origin in programs and activities receiving federal financial assistance. Now, that's the point that I was going to make. This is already on the books. Colleges cannot discriminate based on any of these things, race, color, national origin, at all, at all, because they're receiving, they're receiving federal uh, funding. So that means that they need to abide by the First Amendment. Now, this says that while the such title does not um, cover discrimination based solely on religion, individuals who face discrimination based on actual or perceived shared ancestry or ethnic characteristics do not lose protection under such title for being members of the group that share um, a common religion. Discrimination against Jews may give rise to violations such as such as title when the discrimination is based on race, color, or national origin, which can include discrimination based on actual or perceived shared ancestry or ethnic characteristics. It is the policy of the United States to enforce such title against prohibited forms of discrimination rooted in anti-Semitism as against all other forms of discrimination prohibited by such title and as noted in the United States National Strategy to Counter Anti-Semitism issued by the White House on May 25th, 2023. It is crucial to A. Increase awareness and understanding of anti-Semitism, including its threat to America. Okay, so now we're not going to have a definition of anti-Semitism that we're going to stick to, but we're going to say here that we need to understand um, and have an increase in awareness of anti-Semitism, including its threat to America. Okay, so now we need to um, realize that this is actually a bad thing, which, okay, I can get behind. Increase awareness of what are we going to, we're going to teach this in schools and stuff like that. I already remember that the only thing that we talked about w with Nazi Germany in my whole entire school system, because I went to public schools, was the boy in the striped pajamas. We watched a movie on that. That's the only thing that we talked about. We didn't talk about not what Germany did. We didn't talk about any of that. Um, we watched the movie, and that's how I realized real quick. So, B, improve safety and security for Jewish communities. Okay, so what are they going to do here? Are they going to have federal funding for... Um, officers in the communities and stuff like that, or are we going to have, um, are we going to have more security at places of worship for Jewish communities? Are we going to do that because it's been targeted? So it's just broad. Why are we going to have a broad bill? Um, reverse the normalization of anti-Semitism and counter anti-Semitic 
discrimination. Okay, so what is an anti-Semite and what is anti-Semitism? Do they have a definition? That's what I want to know. Um, that's number C. Number D, expand communication and collaboration between communities. Okay, so are you going to force people to talk to each other? So have like a man on the street type thing? I, I just don't know how we're going to do this exact thing. Now, section three, findings. Congress finds the following. Anti-Semitism is on the rise in the United States and is impacting Jewish students from K through 12 schools, colleges, and universities. I agree. The International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance referred to this act as the IHRA. Working definition, definition of anti-Semitism is a vital tool which helps individuals understand and identify the various manifestations of anti-Semitism. Okay, so now we're getting into the... Um, Anti-Semitism does not have a definition aspect of it. How about we use the definition of anti-Semitism that is out loud, outlined by the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance because they do have a definition, but then when you go to the examples, the examples go way too far. Number three, on December 11, 2019, Executive Order 13899 extended protections against discrimination under the Civil Rights Act of 1964 to individuals subjected to anti-Semitism on colleges in university campuses tasked federal agencies to consider the HI, uh, IHRA working definition of anti-Semitism when enforcing Title VI of such act. Did this work? That's the question I'm going to ask. Did this Executive Order 13899 on December 11, 2019, issued by former President Donald Trump, fix the problem? No, it did not, because we're passing yet another bill. So if the executive order did not fix the problem, if Title VI did not fix the problem, then why do we need another House resolution bill to fix the problem, quote unquote? Because this is not going to fix the problem, sadly. It's a big problem in America. It's a sad problem. It's a disgusting problem. It's an evil problem. Yes, yes, yes. I agree with all those things. But is this going to fix the problem? Or is this only going to come in the middle of free speech? Now, speech is speech, not actions, not harassment, not discrimination, not um, you affecting another individual. Speech with a sign silently, not in a blowhorn. That's speech. Speech is speech. That's it. Speech, you talking. That's it. That's what I mean when I say free speech. Now, is this going to come in the middle of free speech? Is this going to say, okay, well now you can't think a certain way because now the examples that the Holocaust Remembrance Society or the um, International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance, I should say, the IHRA, the examples that they outlined is stereotypes because that's what it says in the examples in the Holocaust Remembrance Alliance. Examples of anti-Semitism is stereotypes of Jewish people. So if you group Jewish people together and have a stereotype, then that's anti-Semitism, which I do not agree with because stereotypes can be about any race of people. So if you look at Asian air Asian stereotypes, they're not good drivers, quote unquote, according to the stereotype. Are we going to say that that's Asian hate crime if you say that Asian people can't drive? Or are you going to say that that's sex based stereotypes because now you're going to say that girls can't drive or women can't drive good? So what is it? And then there's other stereotypes about all different races of people. So are we going to sit here and say that that's a hate crime just to have a stereotype to think a certain way? But to act a certain way is a completely different thing. That's why I'm saying speech is different than actions taken and actions taken against a person more specifically. Um, I don't know how if you get what I put what I'm putting down is, but the freedom of speech that we have in America should not come between a thought crime. It should not it, it should not have to be filed through do you think the certain way or do you actually act the certain way? It's the actions that you take that are going to be um are that are going to be um you know evil. And do I agree with um some of these people? Do I agree with what they're saying? No, but at the same exact time, you you should have the right to say certain things. You should have the right to say certain things. And of course, the freedom of speech does not say, okay, well, if you're harassing something or somebody, you cannot go out and do that thing. Obviously, you cannot go and make threats against another person. You cannot go and do that because yes, that's quote unquote speech, but some speech is not acceptable. But there's some speech just talking in general, sharing your opinions. Um, as long as it's not hurting another person, then that's fine. And a stereotype does not hurt another person unless you're actively making fun of them 
in which case that's just rude behavior and it should not be accepted in society. And that's the key in society. In society and government are two different people and it should be separate. Now, um, the rise of alternative definitions for anti-Semitism impairs enforcement efforts by adding multiple standards and may fail to identify many of the modern manifestations of anti-Semitism. Okay, so what is anti-Semitism? Because we need like a Matt Walsh, what is a woman type documentary on what is anti-Semitism? Because you look at the, like I said, the um, IHRA, which is the Hol International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance. And you look at their definition, which I agree with their definition. I, I agree fully with their definition. But then you look at their examples and their examples are not matching with the definition. So... The White House released the first ever United States strategy to counter anti-Semitism on May 25, 2023, um, making clear that the fight against the hate is a national bipartisan pri priority that must be successfully conducted through a whole-of-government and society approach. For purposes of this act, the term definition of anti-Semitism, so, number one, means the definition of anti-Semitism adopted on May 26, 2016 by the IHRA, of which the United States is a member of um, which the definition has been adopted by the Department of State and which includes the contemporary examples of anti-Semitism identified in the IHRA definition. Okay, so now you, you said two different sentences that mean the same exact thing. The definition of anti-Semitism is outlined by, H, uh, that, by IHRA. So that's, that's just what it means there. Um, in reviewing, investigating... Okay, so I guess let's look at the um, the IHRA definition of anti-Semitism because I the last time that I looked at it, um, I agreed with it. So what is anti-Semitism? This is the Holocaust Remembrance Alliance. So uh, blah 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 blah. And the okay, so anti-Semitism is a certain perception of Jews which may be expressed as hatred towards Jews. Rhetorical, um, rhetorical and physical manifestations of anti-Semitism are directed towards Jewish or non-Jewish individuals and or their property towards the Jewish community, institutions, and religious facilities. I completely agree. Completely agree. Now, if you look at the examples for anti-Semitism, this is what it says. Calling for aiding or justifying the killing of harming of Jews in the name of a radical ideology or an extremist view of religion. I fully agree with that one. Fully, fully, fully agree with that one. That's the example that it set forth. Okay, so let's move on. Making um, dehumanizing, demonizing, or stereotypical allegations about Jews as such of the power of Jews as a collective such as especially but not exclusively the myth about a world Jewish conspiracy or the Jews controlling the media, um, economy, government, or other um, societal institutions. Do I agree with? Do I agree with this one? Obviously, when you sit here and say, "Oh well, this certain person controls the controls the media," and blah blah blah, blah and oh, it's because. It's the same exact thing as saying, oh, it's because of the white man that I can't succeed. Or like a, a black person saying, it's because of the white man that I can't succeed. It's the same exact thing. Are we going to outlaw that? No, I don't agree with that. Because now you're, you, that's an opinion. That's a stereotype of another person, which is bad. I agree. I fully agree that it's bad. I do not agree with that, um, that ideology. I do not subscribe to that ideology. I think that it's evil. But should the law go and say, no, you cannot say this. You cannot think this. No, it should not. That's a little bit too far. Accusing Jews as people as a responsible for a real or imagined wrongdoing committed by a single Jewish person or group or even um, acts committed by non-Jews. OK, so now you're accusing somebody. So now that's in anti-Semitism. So are you hating on a person just because of his or her race? Then, yeah, if it's yes, then that means that you are anti-Semitic by definition but if you're accusing just in somebody and it just so happens to be a jewish person then how is that anti-semitic semitic because of the fact that it does not matter the skin color you're just accusing somebody random but the thing is how do you prove that that's that's how do you how do you split the baby there um denying the fact scope mechanicalisms e.g gas chambers or um in nationality of genocide of the jewish people at the hands of national society Socialist Germany and its supporters and uh, and um, occupy occupants during World War II, i.e., the Holocaust. Okay, so denying that the Holocaust happened, 
Um, I completely, I completely think that this is an opinion. I do not, I'm going to say this again. I do not subscribe to this. I do not think that the Holocaust never happened as some people like to say it. It's disgusting. It's a disgusting ideology, but are we going to have a, a thinking crime bill? Are we going to sit here and say, okay, well, if you don't think that something happened, then you will be prosecuted by the, by the law. But if you do think that this happened, then you will not be prosecuted by the law. How about we educate people and then we can worry about how they think afterwards. Um, accusing the Jews as a people or Israel as a state or inventing or exaggerating the Holocaust. Okay, so now you're, you're, um, see these definitions here. It, I agree with some of them. I, I agree with this one. Of course, um, inventing the Holocaust or exer exaggerating the Holocaust. Again, we need to re-educate people. We need to sit here and say, listen, this is the facts outlined by actual reliable sources here. It did happen. All of these people died. Where the hell are these people then if the Holocaust never happened? That's stupid. Um, accusing Jewish people, citizens of being more loyal to Israel. Okay, so obviously that's just being a jerk. Um, that's just being a selfish person. That's being a self-centered person. That's being an ass. That's what, that's what kind of person that this is outlining. But are we going to prosecute people for being an asshole? Are we going to prosecute people for being a, a um, dick? I don't think that we should. Um, denying the Jewish people have their, their right of self-determination, uh, e.g. by claiming that the existence of a state of Israel is a, racist, is a racist endeavor. Okay, so now you're saying that the state of Israel should not exist. If you are saying that you're anti-Semitic, I, that that, I think that I agree with this. Um, if, there, if there was a couple of, um, I mean, I, see, the thing is, how do you split the baby? You're saying that these opinions on, on somebody else should be against the law. That's why I'm getting into the nitty gritty about this. The definition of anti-Semitism is hating a person just because they are Jewish. It's, the, it's a certain perception of Jews, which may be expressed as hatred towards Jews, rhetorical and physical manifestations of anti-Semitism and directed towards Jewish or non-Jewish individuals and or their property towards the Jewish community institutions and religious facilities. If we kept it like that, then I fully agree. That's why I'm saying the examples of how you can split the baby and then stuff like that, it's just crazy because now you have to act in the court of law as another person to say, okay, does this match the definition? I don't really think it does. I really think that it doesn't. And you're going to have this big debate about it. That's why I'm saying that it's going to open up a can of worms if we leave those examples as they are. But if we removed the examples and just left the definition, then that's going to be up to the um, the court to decide if that is anti-Semitism or if it's not anti-Semitism. That's why I'm so saying that it's such a challenging thing because the examples that it set forth. So, um, Section 5, Rule of the, con the Construction for Title 6 of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. So, in reviewing, investigating, or deciding whether there has been a violation of Title 6 in the Civil Rights Act of 1964, 42 U.S.C. 2000-D, E.C. squared, on the basis of race, color, or national origin based on the individual's actual or perceived shared Jewish ancestry or Jewish ethnic characteristics. The Department of Education shall take into consideration the definition of anti-Semitism as, as part of the department's assessment of whether the practice was motivated by anti-Semitic intent. Now, I completely agree with this. They're going to take the definition outlaw, outlined by the IH, the, in, the, uh, the Holocaust Remembrance Society. They're going to, or alliance, I should say. They're going to take that. And then they're going to see if it actually violates the law. Okay, I completely agree with that. I completely agree with that. So, section six, other rules of the construction. General rule of the construction. Nothing in this act shall be const construed to expand the authority of the secretary of education. Okay, so now I thought that we were just talking about educating people on, on, on the Holocaust and on anti-Semitism as a, as, a, um, as a thing here. So now we're going to not say that this has the authority to expand the secretary of education okay so are we going to how are we going to teach people then uh okay to alter the standards um pr present to which the department of education makes a determination that harassing conduct accounts to actionable discrimination or to diminish or infringe upon the rights of protected under any other provision of the law that is infected that is in effect as the date of this 
of enactment of this act. Constitutional protections. Nothing in this act shall be constructed or diminish or infringe upon any right protected under the First Amendment of the Constitution of the United States. Okay, so now we finish that with that. So that's very, very interesting here. So now you say that you have the right of speech. But then we just said that anti-Semitism is a is a problem and that anti-Semitism is quote unquote anti-Semitism is a certain perception of Jews which may be expressed as hatred towards Jews. So if you say a certain thing, just like if you look at the examples, that's saying speech. So now you're saying that that it can't come in between freedom of speech. So now this is only actions taken against Jewish people. So now we're just putting a hate crime bill on here. So what is a hate crime? Of course, you're committing a crime against somebody when you hate them because you're not going to hate. You're not going to commit a crime against somebody that you love. So this is just practically a hate crime bill. But all throughout the bill, we're talking about speech. So now only actions actually count during this bill. So that's actually my takeaway from it, because if you look all the way at the bottom, it says that 3B of this HR um, 6090, also known as the Anti-Semitism Awareness Act of 2023. So if you look all the way at the bottom there, I'm, it's going to say that. So th this is just very confusing here. Um, obviously, it's trying to say two different things. It's trying not to get in the way of freedom of speech. But like I said at the beginning of this, actions taken are not speech. Actions, you doing something, you harassing somebody, you having a blowhorn, you camping on the college campuses, you um, camping outside, stuff like that is not freedom of speech. You A porn is not freedom of speech. What are you conveying? When you convey speech, that's freedom of speech. Now, with that being said, that's going to do it for my breakdown of this bill. I, what I would have liked to see a bill that exactly sticks with the definition of anti-Semitism outlined by the Holocaust Remembrance Alliance. But since it does not, I don't think that I can accept this bill. But then at the same exact time, it says actions taken um, only. Practically, it says that. So I agree with the bill now then. Because if it's only actions taken against another person, then I fully agree that you should not take actions against another person just because of the fact that you hate them. That's stupid. That's evil. That should not be accepted in society. So then I completely agree with the bill then. But is that going to exactly stick to that the end part there. That's going to be the interesting case and that we should see how it ends up as. With that being said, that's going to be my breakdown of this bill. Very, very interesting bill. Very, very interesting um, that they wanted to pass this now because of the college campus um, situation, stuff like that. It's very, very interesting. But I guess I'm going to keep you up to date on any laws that involve this bill because that's going to be an interesting example on how the court will actually handle this bill. So with that being said, we're going to come out with a full episode of my show tomorrow, the Demetrius Herodro show. This has just been the deep down of this bill. I did not want to wait till tomorrow because obviously it was released today. I want to get you the information that you have or I have in front of me as soon as possible because you guys deserve it. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for listening and I hope they have a great rest of your day. Bye.